Hello all, David Williams with Jesus Ministries. It's your job to be a good example. It is your job. That's a part of why God created you. God created you to to benefit the society around you. And a part of the way that you benefit society is that you live and make decisions in a way that God would want others to emulate. So he would want people to watch you so that they know the right thing to do. So God teaches you what's right so that as people watch you, they'll know what to do. God reveals the truth. He reveals himself in different ways. And the different ways that he reveals himself are through his spirit, through dreams and visions and, and, and audible voices. He reveals himself through the scriptures. He reveals himself through his servants. He reveals himself through situations. Okay? Uh, so God reveals himself in different ways. He, he shows us who he is and he shows us what he's done. One of the ways is through his servants or through situations. So he shows himself through you. Jesus said this. He said that your light, the light of God in your life should shine so brightly that people would see the behaviors of those who love God and that they would praise God because of it. They would glorify the father who's in heaven. Okay, the father of those that are living the right way. So it is your responsibility to be a good example. That takes humility. It takes a surrendered heart to live outside of your own wants. When what you want will hinder the example that you set. So when the things that you're doing cause people around you to do bad things when your behavior causes somebody else to do something that God doesn't want them to do then there's a consequence that you will get from God now that person will be punished for their behavior but there's a consequence that you will get for your your misrepresentation for your failure to show, to, 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 to exhibit God. Let's talk about scrutiny. Since you are created by God to be a good example, since people should watch, they should watch you. Psalm 37, 37, I think it's 37, 37. says, mark the perfect man and uphold the righteous for the end of that man is peace. So, or maybe it's verse 23. So it is the will of God that people watch you. A lot of us don't like to be scrutinized. We don't like to be evaluated. No, it's, verse, it's 37, 37. Psalm 37, 37. Mark the perfect man and uphold the righteous, meaning focus on that individual. Paul says that we should follow the faith of certain people because their faith will show us what God wants of us. God can tell you things directly or he can tell you things indirectly. One of the ways that he tells us things is by showing us the right example. So when people do things that God doesn't want them to do, they are impacting the lives of everyone who sees them do it. So when a person steals from a, from a convenience store, and you watch that person steal, and you watch that person get away with it, that communicates something to you. It tells you that doing wrong things sometimes don't carry a consequence because you're not going to follow that individual to see how that act is going to be uh, recompensed or you're not going to watch that person's life to see well, what was the negative result of him doing that? All you saw was that moment in that individual's life 
of him stuffing the pack of Hostess donuts underneath his jacket and leaving the store without anybody noticing. That that communicates something to you, it, because you're designed to to perceive right and wrong in your environment. You're designed to know right and wrong from your environment. God communicates with us through the things that we see, through the things that we hear. In reference to scrutiny. That means that the people around us, whether they're doing it out of spite, whether they're doing it out of anger, whether they're doing it out of frustration or disappointment, the people around us need to have the opportunity and God will cause them to say things to you that you don't like because he wants you to examine the way that you're living. He wants you to examine the, the decisions that you're making. He wants to hold you accountable for the things that you're saying, that, 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 that you're thinking. And so he'll allow people to save. He'll allow, he, he, he'll allow adversity in your life to come from people so that you reevaluate according to the standard of God's word. According to God's word, God wants you to reevaluate the steps that you're taking because you have a standard but when we're out and about when we're in our homes when we're in other settings when we're with other people we're not often thinking about what we should do sometimes we're just we're we're on autopilot we're just doing what it is that our mind is telling us to do we're, we're not thinking beyond the reactionary thinking where you're just this thought leads to this thought that decision made you do this because that was the next that was the resulting uh, decision okay this leads to this okay so fine but when we live beyond that and we live with a concentration on god on god's expectations and we are in charge and in control of, of our emotions and what's going on with our feelings when we are monitoring what's happening here because we know that God rewards those who are focused on him and God ignores those who ignore him. Because we respect that, we also factor in to that equation that God will use people to say things to us, to evaluate us, to judge us, to criticize us, to scrutinize us so that we consider our actions and we and we consider whether we're doing what God wants us to do or we're acting carelessly we're, or we're acting out of self-will. The word of God condemns self-will. It calls it pride. Uh, one of the things that we struggle with as people is pride. We struggle with a strong sense of individualized right and wrong, meaning we decide for ourselves what's right. We, we decide, we determine our identity, and then we try to, and then we start making decisions based on what we've decided we are based on who we've decided that we are, and we offend God. In Isaiah 53, it says, everybody's gone to his own way, and every man to his own thoughts. It says, all we like sheep have gone away, have gone astray, and, every, and, and everyone's kind of gone in his own direction. That stated, we find ourselves separated from God because, like Isaiah 55 says, our thoughts differ from his. They contradict his. Okay. So scrutiny, evaluation, criticism cannot be avoided because God puts those boundaries, those, those, those checks and balances in your life to make sure that you don't ignore what it is that, you, that you're supposed to be doing. So God has an expectation for you and he will place people in your midst to make sure that you fulfill that expectation. Now your boss or your spouse or your children or whomever, they might just be saying things to you. And if we're 
ignorant will just blow it off and dismiss it as that person being frustrated or as that person being contentious or combative or ignorant. But the reality is God might be speaking through what they just said. God might be talking to you through the way they're treating you. And you need to take that in and evaluate, okay, Lord, is this you talking? And, and you don't evaluate that based on your own thoughts. You evaluate that based on God's word. Like, wait a second. That person just called me greedy. Now, this is what I did. God, what does your word say about what I did? If we evaluate ourselves along those lines and we allow God to speak to us through the various ways he's chosen to, then we'll hear him more clearly and our lives will will be blessed, meaning we will have access and we'll be receiving his goodness and his goodness is active in so many different ways. I remember I had a circumstance this year where I was criticized for doing something, but God had warned me in a dream months before that I would be criticized for doing what I did. And in the dream, he was directing me to do a certain thing, to, to, to set order in our church. And he showed me that there would be individuals that would oppose that and they would blame me and accuse me of something. And so when I was blamed and accused for it, I had a direct reference to what the Spirit of God had already warned me about. And so I didn't have to take into an account what that person was saying. I didn't have to factor in that person's view of my decisions because God had already told me that this is how this individual is going to react to what you just did. So I had to judge what, what I was hearing from that individual based on God's word because God speaks through his spirit. He speaks through scriptures. He speaks through his servants. He speaks through situations. And, and, and so because God does speak, we have to listen. That is how you're going to survive. You're not going to survive by just trying to make the right choices through life. You're going to survive when you are attentive to the voice of God because in the voice of God is the direction of God. And so you are designed to be seen because the Lord wants to speak through your life. God wants to speak through your life, not just what you say, but what you do. God wants to speak through your behavior. So when you allow someone, when you've got 50 items in your grocery cart and the guy behind you has four and you allow him to go in front of you, that speaks volumes. It shows you're considerate of other people because God is considerate of the needs of people. And so when you put your needs down or your privileges, your privileges, your rights, when you put your rights down to help others, that communicates something to those that are watching you. And so we have to be sensitive to God's voice so that we make decisions that others can model. And when they model, they'll be blessed.